So our guys walking in the moonlight, all we need now is a little bit of a lighting effect. It's very similar to what we did for the moon. I'm going to go ahead and uh, expand my character uh, file, and I'm going to duplicate both the cat and the fence layers. So I'm going to duplicate the cat. So this is just a new instance of the cat, and then the fence, I'm going to duplicate that. And that's going to be a new instance of the fence. So I'm going to hide the originals, and I'm going to take this cat cop, I'm going to call this shadow. And I'm going to actually uh, take this and I'm going to flip it upside down. So I'm going to transform it vertical. So now he's facing the wrong way. And I, I guess I should turn on the cat so I can see he lines up like that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to turn, open up my frame here with my cropping. I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to skew him a little bit. Let me stretch him out that so it, it feels a little bit more like distorted so uh you know if he, if he was walking like on a on water or something i guess you could do this like a reflection but I don't, I don't want this to to um behave that way i want i want to tint this out and i want to fuzz it out and make it a little bit transparent so the, where i choose to do it whether i select it on the stage or on the timeline makes a big difference here because before the uh effects weren't possible to do and you would get uh, I could do something like this. I could tint, I could knock the brightness all the way down. And then if I wanted to change the alpha, um, when you change, when you select alpha and the transparency, it, it, um, doesn't render the symbol as a flattened symbol. It renders it as all of the constituent parts, which is troublesome in a situation like this, because I, I want it to be dark and transparent so if i go to advanced and i have multiples and i alpha it out here it still it still doesn't work for me so uh i i'm not gonna do it there i'm gonna i'm gonna knock my brightness down here but then i'm gonna come down here to uh select it in the timeline and even if i do it here I th I'm just, this is where it happens yeah it's still as a color effect it still doesn't do what i want it to do so i need to uh come out here to the filters and uh, throw on a, a blur and crank up my blur a little bit. And now here's where it gets interesting. Now that there's a blur on that, I think this is like a little bug or something, but it, it, it works in your favor because now if I alpha this out, um, the blur is not, uh, you know, Something about this filter effect, it, it flat, I guess it flattens the render. Because even if I knock my blur all the way down, that um, transparency of the alpha and all the interlayering of it and the overlapping translucency of the thing like, that you know, doesn't, right? This is what I'm trying to say. This is gone. Once I add a filter, it, it must like flatten it out. Because now when I do alpha here and then throw a blur on it, it cleans it up for me very nicely and I like that so I'm gonna go with that uh, crank that blur up a little bit and I can make the alpha stronger you know it's, it's pretty f moonlight strong I mean it's not really I don't know, would that even project a shadow on that side of the fence probably not but you know if, if the moon's higher maybe but you know your creative license can a cat walk on two legs and wear a vest so you know I guess that's the first if you if you can if you buy that you should be able to buy the shadow on the wrong side of the fence. So um, now all I need to do is just make the shadow like look like it's actually cast on the fence and not just like everywhere in the air. And that's where the masking comes in handy. So I'm gonna call this my mask. And all I gotta do is just drag it above the shadow and just say mask. And you can't see that because my monitor um, is bigger than the recording and so it's clipped. But if you right click, you can choose masking and it will basically the mask becomes we saw with the body right in the vest the, the mask shape is your window and the whatever is indented underneath the uh, mask layer becomes what you see in the window you think of it that way and then it doesn't work until you say show masking or until you lock in this case you lock all the layers i guess you still have to do it so there when you turn the eyeball on it's like showing masking and now you have that looks like that shadow is cast on the fence and now we can turn on our cropping, and we have achieved our goal.
we've got our character walking with a cast shadow on a endlessly panning background and a little glow and a blur on our environment and it's all there. So there you have it. We've built uh, a scene from scratch and we have went through a lot of different workflows. We've done design, object-based building, um, parenting or hierarchy building. Um, we've used a lot of different types of tweening, shape tweens, classic tweens for symbols. We've created art brushes for things like uh, tails or the stick. Uh, we learned a little bit about um, lock cycle building and uh, overlapping action and breaking of joints. So there's a lot of cool um, little things in here. I hope that you had a good time following along and got some results that you're happy with. And uh, what's nice about Animate and the digital workflow is you can go back and make adjustments, make changes to things and make further refinements and just take it you know, more to your liking. Maybe you want it as simple as changing a color or the advance is changing a design or even changing the timing and the style of the walk. It's all possible now. Um, it's the same methodology we've done here and now you can kind of do what you want with it. So thanks for hanging in there. Uh, good luck with your own uh, work in Animate and we'll see you next time.